Prime Minister Justin Trudeau shuffled some of the top positions in his cabinet this morning, fueling election speculation. The shakeup was prompted by Navdeep Baines, who decided to step down as Innovation Minister. Baines also says he won't be seeking re-election, and we are joined by Navdeep Baines. Right now, he's in Mississauga. Hi, Mr. Baines. Good to see you. Thanks for making the time today. No, thank you very much for having me on, Vashi. We heard the Prime Minister earlier today talk about a walk, he called it, the two of you had, in which you told him that you had decided not to run in the election. When did you make that decision for yourself? So uh, over the holidays, I got to spend some time with the family, like many Canadians. Uh, I've got a daughter who's in uh, grade 8 and a daughter who's in grade 5, and my wife, along with the girls, just sat down and had some difficult conversations, talked about the birthdays I've missed, the dance recitals that I've missed, uh, the fact that I'm not around to help them with their homework. Uh, and I realized that I needed to step up. Uh, and it was a particular example that my daughter gave me during the holidays that cemented the decision for me. She said, look, I'm in grade eight. And uh, by the time you may be done with politics, dad, I might be off to university. So I realized that I just had a few years with them and, and I wanted to be with them, uh, especially uh, during these next few years while they're still at home. The Prime Minister said in that, in that conversation he tried to, to change your mind. What did he say exactly, and, and, and why could your mind not be changed? Well, um, you know, he, he, he tried to, but the moment I started to talk about my girls and talked about my circumstances, you know, uh, Vashi, I'm very fortunate to work with an amazing individual like Justin Trudeau, our Prime Minister, who cares deeply about this country, but I also know him on a personal level. And so he realized very quickly that this was a, a personal decision, a decision that I felt comfortable with, that I thought about over the holidays. Um, and we just talked about families. He's got three kids. He talked about how it is to, to manage those responsibilities. He talked about his father uh, and his father stepping up in a big way for him when he just uh, turned 13 and to spend more time with him and, and, and his siblings. So it was just a personal conversation. He was very gracious, uh, very thoughtful, very kind. Uh, and that meant a lot to me. Had the Prime Minister prior to that conversation directly asked you whether you were going to run or not in the next election? No, uh, he's never indicated or proposed such a question to me. Uh, it, I, I do firmly believe that my decision did catch him off guard uh, because we were so busy with the pandemic. Uh, this fall, we were working on so many initiatives around transforming our privacy and digital laws, focusing on the clean tech agenda, promoting diversity and inclusion. And of course, the mobilization efforts around the Made in Canada project uh, for personal protective equipment that, you know, that's what he thought uh, this conversation would be about is the next steps and some of the initiatives that we need to work on. So this was a truly uh, personal conversation, and, and I believe uh, he wasn't expecting it. Uh, so do you think that uh, the cabinet shuffle would have happened if you hadn't delivered that news to the prime minister? Or was this a, just a result of that? I believe me stepping down from cabinet uh, triggered the cabinet shuffle. And when it comes to the possibility of an election, now you're, you're not going to run in one. It, just, just for clarity's sake, I know you're staying on as, M, as an MP. Will you stay on until the next election, or is there an expiry date on that prior to whenever that election happens? Uh, no, I, I intend to stay on until the next election and serve the residents of Mississauga Malton. Uh, I love my community, and I want to be here for them. Uh, but it allows me to spend more time at home with the girls uh, with slightly less responsibilities, uh, no longer a part of the uh, cabinet uh, but my intention is to stay on until the next election. On the subject of the election, wondering uh, about your perspective on that, because the Prime Minister was asked pretty directly, and all of this stems the election talk because of, of the cabinet shuffle. Lots of questions about whether there should be one or whether uh, your party would, would do anything to trigger one until every Canadian who, who wants to be vaccinated is actually vaccinated. Should your party avoid doing anything to trigger an election until every Canadian who wants a vaccine gets one? What do you think? I think Canadians realize that we're working around the clock uh, to do everything we possibly can when it comes to the rollout with the vac uh, vaccines, working with the provinces, trying to figure out the end-to-end -end logistics that are required to do this in the most timely manner. And that's our, our focus. That's our objective. Uh, but of course, this is a minority government. So uh, I don't have a crystal ball, Vashi. I don't know when an election will occur, but I can assure you our cabinet conversations, our caucus conversations, 
all revolve around how we can protect Canadians, how we can save lives and save jobs. And that's going to be our focus, I believe, as a government going forward. I take your point that, that it's your focus and, and that you can't speak for the opposition parties and certainly they might do something uh, differently. We, we don't know. But but as a Liberal, and, and you're not a minister anymore, but as a Liberal, do you think your party should avoid doing anything to trigger an election in the absence of uh, you know, most people in this country being vaccinated? Yeah, our number one priority is the health and well-being of Canadians. We're not... But that's not an answer, with respect, with respect no, Mr. But no, but Vashi, the point being is it's a minority government, and you're, the, the, the underlying issue here is that there's so many factors at play. If the opposition parties come together and want to trigger an election, they have the ability to do that. So from our perspective, we can't predict how they're going to behave. But our goal is to focus. But on you can control your own. Well yeah, you can. Con I mean, the liberals can control their own actions, right? Not everything is 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 what the opposition parties do. So in that vein, it, it, and I'm not I'm not in any way saying you're absolutely right. Of course, the, the opposition parties can can uh, can force an election too or trigger an election too. And I would ask the same question of them. But from the liberals' perspective, would you want to avoid that at all costs until there's mass vaccination? Yeah, that, that is the priority, is the max uh, that, that we want to focus on the vaccination process, that we want to roll out these vaccines. We want to, uh, you know, we know that Canadians are anxious and frustrated and concerned about how things are unfolding. They want to see this process move forward in a timely manner. And so that's what we're focused on. That's what the prime minister announced today with the additional vaccines as well. So, uh, you know, that is going to remain a priority for us in terms of the election timing. You know, in a minority government, it's so difficult to say with any degree of certainty when an election will occur. Uh, but I think it's safe to say that uh, our focus, especially now and what people expect from us now, is to focus on the task on hand, which is the vaccine rollout. Your one piece of advice, uh, Mr. Baines, for your successor, if you had to pick one single most significant piece of advice for Francois-Philippe Champagne, what would it be? Cherish this moment. Uh, it truly is an honor and privilege uh, to serve Canadians. This is the best country in the world. Uh, my father came here uh, in the early 70s with $5 uh, to his name. Uh, and uh, he learned the cabinetry business from his Italian friends, by the way, who didn't want to call him Belvinder. And they, uh, they stuck with Vinder and said, Vincenzo. And so they said, you know, Vincenzo, we're going to teach you the cabinetry business. And he never imagined in his wildest dreams that his son would be a federal cabinet minister. And so for me to have this opportunity to serve, uh, I look back at it, it was is a window of opportunity. Over the 17 years that I've been involved in politics, I had the privilege to serve for 13 years and five years in cabinet, uh, and it flew by. So my advice to Francois Philippe is cherish the moments, uh, take full advantage of this uh, once in a lifetime opportunity uh, to serve uh, not only your local community, but at the federal level as a federal cabinet minister to serve Canadians. And just fa one final quick question before I let you go. Do you have a, a job left uh, lined up? I know there's a lot of speculation given your portfolio that you're going to work in the auto sector or something to that effect. Can, can you clarify for our audience? <laughs> no, nothing lined up. Uh, the only thing I'm going to focus on uh, is being a good dad. I'm going to spend a lot of time with my girls. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Baines. Pleasure to have you on. I appreciate you making the time. Thanks so much, Vashi. And thank you again on a personal level for holding me and our government to account. Uh, I think uh, just on a, on a personal note, it's, it's I've been reflecting a lot today and, you know, we all play our functions and roles. And and I think in a healthy democracy to have a media that holds us to account is so important. So thank you. And to all the reporters who reached out to me today as well. Uh, thank you for uh, keeping me accountable to Canadians. Well, well thanks for saying oh. that. And uh, and it's our job. <laughs> That's what we got to do. Thank you, Mr. Baines. All the best. Hi, I'm Vashi Capello's host of Power in Politics. See more of our show by subscribing to the CBC News Channel or click the link for another video.